Hello and welcome back to episode 4 of DML Rebirth. So, we have just unlocked another island which is going to give us plenty of space. Um, it's just, it starts getting pretty expensive now because it's like 30,000, 160,000 to clear out some of the obstacles. But one of our main goals is going to be get as much gold as we can and clear out the islands. And at this stage we are on day two of the account being made. So um, yeah, before this that was all done in one day essentially. So we came back at level 27 here and we've actually run out of space because again we really need to clear out that, um, that desert island because otherwise it won't let us actually upgrade this earth habitat here that we have. But we've also been upgrading our prairie dragon which it's still not the most optimal pick, but Prairie does have those three elements, and uh, we only have 900 Dragon Collector points right now. Um, so yeah, we're a little bit desperate for something that isn't just a common. So um, our Prairie's been doing good work for us in the map in terms of, you know, arena fights and things like that. And uh, he's also going to help us with things like towers, um, when we ha actually have to upgrade, well, I say towers, temples. Because temples are a major stopping point for a lot of people, especially the ones where your dragons are stuck at level 30. Um, a lot of people struggle with those because you just need a load of dragons that all have the same elements, essentially, all above a specific level. So um, I'm going to be keeping that in mind when we level up a dragon. And uh, plus, now that level 6 upgrades are held behind dragon collector points as well, it means that even the level 6 fire upgrade, we have to wait on it quite a long time. Um, it never used to be like that. In DML it just used to be you'd upgrade the um, the academy and that would be it. And here we've got an invitation to chill clan. So um, at the moment, of course, we can join a clan from level 25. So we're going to join this clan request that we've received because there's no reason really not to. And then at level 30... We're going to go and create our own clan. So even if we're only going to get benefit out of this for, say, two or three levels, you're going to, you know, upgrade the the clan's experience and uh, potentially use the clan dragon power, things like that in the meantime. And for, like, three to five levels worth, still worth joining a clan for. Um, and plus, you might not want to leave the old clan. You might just want to keep staying in a clan that you get invited to. And, you know, this one's called Chill Clan, so I imagine they're not going to be too aggy for people getting specific, you know, milestones and events and things like that. Because newer players really struggle to hit specific milestones, and it kind of sucks, and a lot of them end up getting kicked from clans, because you do have to be really active in certain clans for them to let you stay. But... Main goal is going to be level up to 30 and get lots of gold for that other island. But we've come back here. This is a little bit later on and we have a harpy dragon here who is basically an epic version of our prairie dragon. And like I said, prairie was not the optimal pick and realistically we did want an epic version of prairie and we do actually have an epic version of prairie now. So then you'd be like, well why did you bother leveling up the prairie dragon? And that was purely because Prairie was a really, really useful dragon for the first day. Now, Prairie does already have upgrades to attacks, and Prairie's already enchanted. So for the short term, Prairie is actually going to be more powerful, as in, in terms of base stats, than our Harpy Dragon here. But Harpy Dragon, in terms of its elements, can also be used to breed the current dragon of the month at this point, the cleric dragon. So um, if we wanted to, for instance, we could go and try and breed cleric. Obviously a six hour timer is not a cleric dragon. But I'm definitely considering leveling up harpy instead of prairie from this point onwards. It's like prairie's done his job, he's gotten us a good head start in the game. And maybe we can still use him for a few more levels, because at 1000 DCP we barely have any elements unlocked. Now, if you're someone that has, say, had an account for a longer period of time, 
and uh, you do have more elements unlocked and more DCP, I don't ever recommend leveling up two dragons with the exact same elements. Ever. But the only problem is here, for instance, like we've just got our Lilac Horn dragon. That's another new dragon that's going to give us more DCP. But Void, we're not actually going to unlock for, in the grand scheme of this count, for another good while. So even if I wanted to use a Void dragon, I at max could level it up to level 10, which is not going to help me in the map. And uh, it's not going to help me during castle events either. So I will level him up to level 10, again, purely for the collector points. But we're not going to really have a Void dragon for a long time. The old strategy that I used to use with new accounts was uh, get a dragon with a, a new element. So, for example, like that um, lilac horn for his void. And then we'd try and breed that with a different dragon so that we'd have void on a lot of dragons. But, again, now that we can't do anything with them, I don't really care. So, I came back a couple of levels later and we are now at level 30. So, um... Yeah, I, our experiences with Chilled Clan didn't last very long. Um, it's just because we're focusing on doing map fights so much that um, we're just speeding through levels still. So I'm sorry, Chilled Clan. I did use them a little bit, but this is not the place for us. We will indeed be creating our own Quackalex Android Clan. Um, there was an existing one. Um, but I'll be honest, because I didn't play Android DML for like two years, I have no idea what happened with it. But either way, there will be a new Android clan, and um, it's full right now, is all I'm going to say. So we also were taking part in the weekend events, and it seems like we're going to win the Xylophone Dragon out of that, which would be pretty cool, getting a free epic. Um... So, please, I would really love to get myself a free Xylophone Dragon. That would be fantastic. Um, so, if we're going to make our own clan here, I like the colour blue, so I'm probably going to pick that. And what dragon are we going to put on the front? Um, probably Harpy, because Harpy's the one I'm going to use. I mean, uh, actually, no, yeah, Ceremony's too wonderful. Yeah, I would put Harpy on, because Harpy's probably going to be one of the main dragons that we're going to use for this first portion of this account still, but um, you know, all hail Lord Ceremony, all hail Lo Lord Ceremony. Has there anyone ever noticed how Apollo has the same elements as Lord Ceremony, but just in divine form? Very, very important. That's why we were screaming to hashtag free Apollo for so long. So um, when you make a clan, of course, you get to choose what the logo design is and you get to sort of write a description. A lot of people would use the description to talk about requirements. It's like you have to earn at least X amount of points each clan event. Um, I'm just going to say all hail Lord Ceremony. Um, and it's 1.5 million gold. So, of course, I went and did a lot of fights, came back, and we're going to make this. I'm going to make sure that it is... Um, a global clan and you can choose whether you want to open or join by request and I'm going to set it to join by request um, just an open clan is also not too bad for people that are struggling to get members so if you don't have a lot of people to invite to your clan for example just make it an open clan but I'm just going to make it a, uh, a request clan because we're probably going to get lots of invites to join um, but now we've got the clan dragon egg to get hatching, and to be honest, I have so few hatchery slots and so much going on that I'm probably not going to be the one to do that. So if anyone else is going to join the clan, go ahead and hatch some chip dragon eggs. I'd be very grateful. <laughs> See, that's the great thing about clans. Um, sometimes you can just leave other people to do the egg hatching for you. You still should do at least some, but in this particular scenario where I'm sort of power leveling a new account, it's not on my priority list at all. It would just be nice if we could get chip unlocked because we can get reduction to our hatchery times. Uh, we're also really close to Balloon Dragon in terms of friendship milestone, so I'm going to keep adding friends, sending them gifts, hiring friends dragons, and we should be at Balloon in about two and a half to three days of the the account being live, which isn't too bad. 
I'm also going to make sure that I put dragons in their actual um, habitat types that are the same as the dragon itself, because if you put them in, say, legendary habitats, you're going to struggle to collect gold from them during events. So I'd rather put a plant dragon in a plant habitat, for example, or a fire dragon in a really low-level fire habitat, which is something that I'm going to take advantage of a lot during the castle event period. So, we've also got all of the ruins that we should be exploring all the time, even if we've only got a 40% chance of finding the chest in them, because um, it can still give you stuff. Sometimes it won't give you anything of value, like it'll give you a few hundred food, but if you do get, like, the gold chests or the rare chests, then you can get lots of gems, so it's still worth it. But we've got all of these... Um, obstacles to clear on here which is going to give us lots of XP as well we're going to keep power leveling with our level um, mainly just for the extra portal energy so for example here we've got a full set of portal energy and we're against level 27 dragons now so realistically it's going to start costing a five energy to hire friends dragons now which is the reason why I've been upgrading my portal it's really important that you upgrade your portal so that you can do this when you get to a point where you're sort of stuck. So, um, yeah, let's hire an Apollo dragon, spend two more energy here, and then we can clear out this fight. And plus, again, when we hire our friends dragons, we do get some friendship points for doing it. I believe it's 200. So if you're going for things like, you know, balloon or the gems out of that, then um, it's a good place to get lots of extra stuff, really. So... With all the social features, I always say, if you're going to add people, it's going to give you good bonuses. If you're not willing to add people using, say, a Facebook account or go on the Discord server, that's sort of your own fault. Um, especially with Facebook, because I know that a lot of people say don't want to use their main Facebook account to, you know, connect to DML, which is completely understandable. And that's why I'd recommend you make a completely separate Facebook account for games that you connect to over social media on Facebook and just other social sites in general. Just don't have it linked to your actual main Facebook account. Just make a separate account and then you can add people on there and just don't post anything else. Just post game related stuff. Therefore, people aren't going to mistake it for a personal account or anything and you can just spam people with invites and not feel bad about it. Whereas if it was your actual account, people might think, oh god, this person's annoying. You know what I mean? <laughs> they don't have to feel bad about it, essentially. Um, but, you know, along with doing regular map progression, um, also doing lots of arena fights is important for the bonuses there. Uh, we do have our agent dragon here, which we're also going to hatch, who's another void dragon. And... I did want to sort of use this dragon early game, but again, forgetting slightly about all of the dragon collector point requirements, um, I'm probably not going to get a lot of use out of him, but during the Divine Castle event part 2, there are quite a lot of metal fights. So this dragon may not be able to be above level 10 yet, but by the time the castle event comes out, we're probably going to have enough resources to level him up, and he might be useful during the event. So we've hit 1.7k now, so we've been speeding through the DCP at the moment, as well as levels. Um, so we get a free legendary habitat, and we might as well put this down. Although again, I prefer normal habitats in the meantime, but they can house lots of gold. Um, it's just, they're not as useful for events, and if I really want an event dragon, like, you can get some really good event dragons, like Nezha, <laughs> or Loki, and um, so doing events is quite important. And what do we get? Another six hour timer! It's like the game just wants to give us all of the commons and all of the base dragons that we don't have yet. Not bad. Not bad. The good thing about being a new player is that, um, more or less everything is new. Um, so you're rarely going to get duplicates unless you're using really poor breeding combinations. So, um, of course, at the time of this, we still had the Divine Chest. We get 10 pieces of Chrono Osiris. Doesn't matter to me. I more so cared about the gold that we got. But those Divine Chests certainly did give us a big, big boost to our overall... Well, just our resources in general. They were fantastic for it. 
and castle events are the same because every time you step on a tile you're gonna get bonus resources you're gonna get food gold scrolls scrolls are the big important one because um unless you're doing all of your side quest battles and unless you are taking part in things like events you're probably gonna end up running out of scrolls really quickly i personally have not run out of scrolls in well years even on this account um so just keeping that in mind that when you are upgrading your dragons in the academy you will need the scrolls you will need gold and you will need to pick the right upgrades as well there's a lot that goes into it but level upgrades to elements are really good like you get bonus damage upgrading from level two to level three and so on uh, so I've come back and went out 7.4 in a friendship milestone which means that we do one more hireable fight and we will have unlocked ourselves Balloon and Balloon is another epic dragon he does have three elements and he is an energy dragon which we're gonna unlock energy actually yeah next so we could technically consider using Balloon in our team um, would it be the best option out there? Well, technically not, because of course the best dragons in the game are, you know, ancients and some exception divines, because Bless is so good. But you don't need to be 100% optimal from every stage in the game. It's just something to keep in mind, because like I've mentioned before, at this point in the game, like an account that's a couple of days old with barely any DCP, using legendaries is not going to be good for you because you're not going to be able to unlock their legendary attacks as in you're not going to be able to upgrade them and plus you've got to spend all the gems on unlocking their third element and you can't actually awaken elements until level 20 and level 30 anyway so um it's not worth using until you at minimum have dragons at level 30. and plus then enchantment materials my god legendaries and divines take not legendaries, ancients and divines take a long time to enchant these. But anyway, in the meantime, there's another epic dragon for us. We don't have many of those. Um, so every single time we get an epic, it's like, ooh, that's pretty nice. But we've got balloon, orange throat, and a red talon. And we also have our salamander dragon that I've just skipped ahead a little bit. And um, we've gone and hatched him. So you don't have to worry about trying to breed salamander because he is the reward dragon for logging in on day two. Of you having a DML account and we finished the basic hybrids collection and gotten the fireball dragon. So completing collections is also going to give you lots of bonuses. You can get things like gems and you can get other things for taking them beyond level one now with the changes to how collections work. But overall I wouldn't worry about the collections all that much because over time you're just going to finish it off naturally when you're, say, breeding for Dragons of the Week or Dragons of the Month, you're going to end up breeding a grand majority of those Codex Dragons anyway. It's only when you, say, have gotten all the base Dragons down, most of the commons, where you're going to have to start being really specialised in what you breed. But, uh, I guess we can sort of go for a Water Dragon here, because there's lots of Water Dragons that we don't have yet. I, of course, would still love to breed Void Dragons, and... Um, but, you know, we don't have Void Unlocked yet, so curse us the way that DML now works. It just sort of slows everyone down a lot, and 4 hour timer? Is that a new dragon? I don't actually know. Um, but this is also a good time to point out that you should be using the DML Wiki and the DML Breeding Planner, because it will show you every outcome for every breed that you do, and uh, what the timer is. So if you're ever not sure what dragon you've bred, well, you can check the DML planner and then you'll be like, oh, so I've bred a, I don't know, plasma dragon? Wonderful. Um, and yeah, we're already nearly at 15, 15 members in our clan and it's been set up for like a day, not even. Um, so I know that a lot of people do struggle with their making clans and things like that. I know, it can suck trying to get people in, but if you're struggling with your own clan, just join as many clans as you can and see if one sticks. Best advice that I have for you. Um, 
it was pretty funny with the boss challenge because all the enemies were just stuck at level 4 and it's like any dragon would just decimate them for the duration of the entire event. Um, kind of weird. It's like, why are they all level 4? They're just sort of stuck. Oh, God. But anyway, like I said, we've got Chip in here, which I want to get him unlocked because then we can reduce our hatching timers. And plus, when you have a clan dragon, they help during clan events. So, for example, um, one of them increases your chances of a legendary recipe coming up and things like that. So the clan dragons are useful indeed. So we return now on day five. So we've skipped about three days of DML now since um, the first section of this. And um, we're still at 12 members and we're at 15 chip eggs hatched, which is better than zero. And I've done zero of those. Um, we do also have the academy, which we should really upgrade soon so that we can get level five elements. And oh, of course, we've got more ads. Thank you, Barbie. I don't know how people put up with this day in, day out. Just the amount of Barbie ads I get and Lego Connect. <sighs> you know, the way that you can stop the ads is making any purchasing game, even if it's the smallest gem purchase. Obviously, I'm trying to do this free to play just to prove to people that, you know, even if you don't spend anything ever and make the zero purchases, you can still do stuff in game. But my god, the ads really are pushing me to my limit. So, you see, I've just upgraded my Ice Dragon there to level 15. Reason being that I really wanted to upgrade our water temple. And we do need dragons at level 15. So, rather than leveling up our commons to level 15, I'd rather level up. Or I should say instead of leveling up our single element commons, I'd rather at least level up a dragon with two elements as a minimum. So, Mud Dragon here is an earth and water dragon, and I think we've already got a lot of earth dragons. It's just we didn't have many water dragons before, and that's what the breeding helps with. We've hit another collector milestone. A void is unlocked in just under another K. So... It's probably going to take another day or so before we get Void, but we're making progress here. And of course, in the meantime, between these clips, I will be just using all of my portal gems to progress in the map as far as I can, and using all of my arena tokens to win streaks in the arena. It's just, after a while, just doing the same repetitive task of do map fights, do arena fights, just gets really boring. So I won... You know, we've all done that before seven million times, so unless I'm doing some really particularly hard fights, I usually tend to just not show those. But, you know, we've got lots of quests still for... It still wants us to breed a salamander dragon, even though we've got one. It's like, come on, you unlock that dragon on day two, why do I need to breed one? But you can sort of use the quest to guide you somewhat in what dragons to breed sometimes, just because then it'll be like, oh, I'm not sure what to breed today. What are we feeling like? And then if you're just going, you can either throw two random dragons in there or use the quest system to try and get quests done at the same time, which is being more optimal. Um, but I'm just sort of filling out dragons that have elements that I want. So, for example, I went for water and plant there, so that I could upgrade my plant temples if I have more plant dragons at level 15. And then it's going to be the same for plant dragons at level 20 for the second temple upgrade. So, yeah, I'm really focusing on making sure those temples are done, personally. But there's a lot of different tactics that you can use. It's just I know that we are going through this game really quickly, so getting the temples up and getting our dragons leveled up is most important to me. If you're going to focus on getting as many dragons as possible, you might want to technically change your approach. But, you know, at the end of the day, the longer you've had an account, the more unique dragons you're probably going to have, just because of throwing them into the hatchery, of course. So, you know, if I've only had this account for five days, which I haven't been super super on it for day three and four but um it's five days old now just so um this is where we're up to still level 37 about to be level 40 very soon but now we don't really get many major upgrades in game like before we got enchantment and we got sigils and then we got clans and then we got our own clan 
But there isn't really a whole lot of that anymore. From this point onwards, it's just sort of clean sailing for us, and we just sort of do what we do. We do also have heroic mode unlocks now, which you will unlock as you progress through on the map. Um, the thing with heroic mode is it does use two energy instead of just one. And if you've power leveled on the main map, just in the normal version, the amount of XP and resources you get from heroic mode is going to be a lot lower than just doing, say, a individual fight on the regular map. So, I've been sort of avoiding heroic mode, which is not necessarily the best thing to do. But it's like between hiring my friend's dragons to get a level up after four fights or having to do like 20 heroic mode fights sometimes. It depends on where you're up to, essentially, and what player level you are. And uh, you should still be clearing out heroic mode because three starring it, of course, is going to give you more food, it's going to give you more gold, and plus you're going to unlock more side quest belt. But, you know. In a sense, power leveling has actually held me behind the heroic mode. It's just like I've got too much to use my portal energy on now that it becomes difficult to choose which one I want to actually use. But, you know, we're going to keep progressing on the map, doing more fights, leveling up, and uh, hiring friends dragons when we need. Although, when we know that there's an upcoming castle event or a special event that's going to require lots of battles, I would not recommend that you waste your portal gems. So, right now we're okay since we've got a couple of days before the castle event starts, and I don't think we're low on portal gems, but if you are really low on portal gems, normally I recommend you stay around the 200 max cap of portal gems if you can. Um, if you can't, and then say you're at like 50, it's also doable, but you probably will struggle quite a bit more. But, yeah, it depends on what you're trying to get to in terms of reward unlocks in the event you're taking part in, yada yada. But here we go, we've done a lot of arena fights, and, uh, you know, arena definitely used to be tougher in the sense that when you'd go against an enemy, it was because they were in that event, or in that bracket. But then they changed it, what was it, like two years ago now? Maybe a year ago? How every single opponent that you face in the arena, regardless of where you're up to, is just based on the level of your own dragons. So regardless of which league you're in, you're always going to be able to win fights. Which is not the case in Enchantment Arena, and uh, it never used to be the case. So going to higher arena leagues used to be much tougher. Which also means that now we're probably going to accidentally over level in the arena and then we might end up getting stuck in the highest arena bracket before elite league with like level 30 dragons at this rate um <laughs> which is kind of ridiculous but that's just how the game is now it's sort of like if you're doing arena fights consistently you're probably just going to go crazy in the arena um not that you gain too much you do get some additional dragons you do get some like uh, decorations uh cares about decorations tbh but you do also get lots of dragon card pieces for dragons for getting a certain milestone which is pretty good of course in elite league you also get enchantment tickets which are really really good because then you can unlock purple chests with them and oh boy howdy do i love me some purple chests so for the meantime, getting all of your arena fights done is going to help out a lot in terms of, you know, getting more arena gems. So that when you do start going on big arena streaks in Elite League, for example, then you're going to have loads of extra arena gems. And plus, if you've got lots of arena gems, then during castle events, that like the, um, the Divine, the Final Journey one, that has requirements of 850 per battle quest, the extra arena gems are really gonna help. So there's a lot of mini things that you can do as a player to sort of prepare for future major events. And I think that's the thing where a lot of people fail because they say, you know, as a newer player, it's not possible to do those events. And I'll agree with you that it's difficult. 
but it's definitely not impossible. Even on my old, um, original Android account, um, I was doing events from an early level. But, um, yeah, it's not impossible. So I don't know why people always try and give up all the time, but definitely not impossible. And I'm going to show you that when we unlock Nezha, and people are going to be like, oh my god, did you hack? No, I did not hack. It's just, you know, having lots of habitats down, having lots of bonus portal gems, having lots of bonus arena gems, having uh, hatchery slots available, things like that are going to help us out a lot. And that has taken us to level 38, which has given us more energy, which of course means more battles that we can complete. So, yeah, lots of, lots of map fights. Um, I mean... People have pointed out before that, again, you can use specific dragons with specific elements on certain parts of the map. But you can see here we're against energy dragons, even though all three of our dragons here are fire dragons. Um, so we just avoid using the fire element most of the time. Apart from when we're against, you know, legendary dragons like this brute dragon. But... The main thing that's going to help you out is just base dragon level. It's not really going to matter too much what your dragon's elements are. It's just going to be down to what level they are, what sigils they have equipped, and so on. And which is why a reason that you should definitely be buying premium sigil chests out of the dungeon. So if you ever check the dungeon and say you're doing dungeon runs, you'll have the choice of at 500 tokens buying a premium sigil chest or other things and I've gotten really lucky with premium sigil chests before and gotten like rare purities out of them out of one chest and uh, trust me a rare purity right at the beginning of the game or as soon as you unlock sigils that is going to boost you through the map a lot so even though it is based in RNG the chances of you getting a rare sigil aren't actually that unlikely. So, you know, with most things in game, I'm like, avoid the RNG bit. Like, especially with elements, I don't really like the light element. Because it is based in RNG. But, with premium sigil chests, just having uncommons and rares compared to common sigils makes such a huge difference to even your base HP that it's usually worth doing. Yeah, there's new dragons available in the dungeon for 999, and then you get other things like um, relics and that in the dungeon as well, which are also really, really tempting. But compared to sigils, I don't know. I mean, at the same time, the new sigil campaign maps are going to be reduced in their overall difficulty, mean, meaning that lower level players or those with lower tier sigils, might even get lots of bonus stuff now. So I think sigils are just really overpowered in game in general. Although events will be scaled based on your sigils that you have equipped. But I think sigils are just as important. In fact, they're more important than enchantment. Like, you could go the entire game in DML now without enchanting a dragon, but not using sigils on a dragon. You could also not use sigils, um, but the bonus that they give is infinitely better than a two-level upgrade from the enchantment leak. So, that is my general tip for that. And here we are against Brickon, who's a level 29 dragon, who does have the energy element, which means he's probably going to one-shot two of our dragons at once, or at least come close. So we can just hire a dragon here and make this fight really, really easy. Um, so yeah, I'm going to hire a snow dragon because any dragon really could work here. Why don't we just like BM brick on and just use a common to destroy him instead. Or at least something that's not an epic. You see I've got lots of friends that have divines and things like that. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Let's just use a common. <laughs> and there we go. Brick on is dead. One shot. Very, very sad indeed. But that does mean another quest is complete for getting past this fight as well, because you get lots of XP from that quest. And then we move on to the next island against level 30s. So we really would benefit from leveling up our own dragons a little bit now. But I'm glad that we got up to this point. Having Brickon cleared, big 
big relief to me. Um, in the meantime, we're going to keep collecting gold, collecting food, doing more fights, and uh, getting events done. So in general, that's what I want to showcase today. We've got some cool stuff coming next time as well. But keep going with the grind. Usually the best thing to do in DML is just grind a little bit more, do more fights, do more of this, do more of that, and then you'll get the benefits for it. And I'm going to be throwing down lots of fire habitats in prep for the castle event coming up. But we're almost at level 40, which is very different from level 25 of yesterday or last time. So for now, I appreciate you joining us on this quest, and I hope you join us next time for Rebirth Episode 5. But for now, I hope this helped you out. If you do need anything else, let me know.